and I found everyday spices. It makes my cooking healthy and my family loves it. Everyday spices, the choice of a healthy family. After recent defection of 21 MPF MLS into NDPP4, former Chief Minister and Leader of Defected, MLS Tia Zilyang ceases to be leader of opposition in 13 Nagaland Legislative Assembly. Commissioner and Secretary of Nagaland Legislative Assembly Dr. P. Jantoni in a notification on Saturday announces dismissal in compliance with order of Speaker under Para 4 close 2 of 10 shadows of MLS. Nagaland State Transport introduced new bus service from Agunaka to Dimapu for convenience and to facilitate the travelling public from May 7. Minister for Public Health Engineering flag off state transport bus at Agunaku ESE headquarters on Saturday under Newland District. Free awareness health camp held at Government Middle School in Nutanbasti Aukel on Saturday. Central Council for Research in Home Opeti, Minister of Ayush Government of India with cooperation from Colony Hat and Chairman organized free health camp. Dimapu Shehate plastic bag can't and Natulabule July 1st for us. Chirukribo, Kwekana Janakshi. Yunan Minister Amit Shah, Citizenship Amendment Act to be implemented. In the given areas, Assam MLA Akhil Gogoi informed that Northeast People and the Citizen Amendment Act is scheduled to be CAA against the agitation. Hello and welcome to Nagaland TV. This is your anchor Rovinya Lama and you're watching English Prime Time. Now I shall read the news in details. After the recent defection of 21 NPF MLS into the NDPP fold, the Nagaland Legislative Assembly has dismissed former Chief Minister and leader of the defected MLS Tia Zilyang as the leader of the opposition in the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly. Notably, the Commissioner and Secretary of Nagaland Legislative Assembly, Dr. P. J. Antoni, has issued a notification on Saturday, wherein it stated that it complies with the order of the Speaker under FARA 4 Clause 2 of the 10 schedules of the Naglen Legislative Assembly, disqualification on ground of defection rules in 2019, issued via a bulletin to NOS 32 and 33, dated 29 April 2022. Therefore, the notification stated that it, in light of the early decisions of the NPF Legislative Party to join the United Democratic Alliance and the merger of 21 NPF MLS, and also the order of the Speaker accepted the claim and thus seized T.R. Zilyang as the leader of the opposition in the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly. As the state is gearing up for upcoming 2023 assembly election amidst all the political development, the Eastern Sumiho organized a leadership workshop on clean election campaign at Sumi Baptist Church in Suyochung town on Friday. Notably, the workshop was held under the theme Nikoho Achilles Chini, which means to reform our society, with a motive to educate the citizen on their rights to vote. Through the workshop, the ESH spread awareness on the importance of choosing God's fearing leaders. It may be mentioned that the workshop was attended by 352 participants and leaders from different faith based organizations, village council, VDBS, and GBS of different villages, along with the Eastern Sumi Kukami Hoho, Eastern Sumi Totimi Hoho, and the Kipri Twensong District Sumi Student Union.
Pongyu Healthcare Communitization, the Nagaland Minister for Health and Family Welfare, as Pongyu Pom, highlighted about the increase in public health care utilization in the state through communitization. While addressing the 14th Conference of the Central Council of Health and Family Welfare under the banner Swastya Chintan Shivir at Tan City in the Kevadia in Gujarat on May 5. The minister talked about the various steps taken by the government of Nagaland to improve service delivery in the public health care system. The minister also discussed about the Nagaland Communitization of Public Institution and Services Act 2002 and the proposed health insurance cover for government employees. Pang Yu also briefed the conference on the launch of the Ayushman Bharat government in Nagaland, which was first launched in the state on August 9, 2018. Notably, the conference was being held under the chairmanship of the Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare, Manchuk Mandavia, and the Chief Minister of Gujarat, Bupen Drabhai Patel. Notably, the conference will end on May 7. Dimapur Deputy Commissioner Raja Sandara Rajan issued an order notifying that single-use plastic will be banned with effect from July 1, 2022. The order also stated that manufacture, import, stocking, distribution, sale and use of single-use plastic including polystyrene and expanded polystyrene will be prohibited with effect from July 1, 2022. Other banned items include earbuds with plastic stick, plastic stick for balloons, plastic plate candy stick, ice cream stick, and thermocol for decoration, along with plates, cup, glasses, forks, spoon, knives, straw, trays, wrapping, or invitation card, and cigarettes, packet, etc. The DC further appeals to all individuals, institutions, commercial establishment, educational institution, offices, hotels, shop, restaurant, religious institution, and faith-based institution, industrial establishment, banquet hall, including military and paramilitary in the state, to abide the order. DC also warned that any breach will be liable for a penalty. Four districts of the state is to witness a total shutdown of power from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Delhi in the part of Mokjung District, Mon and Longland District from May 9 to 14, while in Zunabuto from May 16 to 20 and Twensang from May 20 to 26. Notably, the Department of Power has informed that move has been taken in view of the vegetation clearance for 66 kV transmission line under Transmission Division Mokjung which is scheduled from May 9 to 26, 2022. In a press release, Transmission Division Mokotung Executive Engineer Ahoto Aie informed that the, the proposed exercise was necessitated to with the aim to provide stable power supply and avoid unwarranted disruption of supply. The department further appealed to all public in the affected area to extend cooperation. The Women Police Station of Kohima has been announced as the best police station for Nagaland State in the annual ranking of police station done by the Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. Notably, a total of 16,955 police stations all over India were evaluated and 74 police stations were shortlisted, out of which the Women Police Station Kohima was selected as the best performing police station in the state of Nagaland. Furthermore, a certificate of excellence issued by the MHA under due signature of the Union Home Minister of India was handed over to the officer in charge of Women Police Station Kohima by the DGP Naglan on Friday. The DGP, while extending his congratulations, also expressed his happiness that the Women Police Station Kohima was the only Women Police Station in India to make it to the short list. It is to be mentioned that during the program, SR Saravanan, ADGP and Special Secretary Home Nagaland and Sandeep Tamgeda, ADG, ADPG LNO Nagaland were also awarded the Antrik Shuraksha Seva Padak Medal in recognition of the services towards the maintenance of internal security in the state.
The Nagaland State Transport has introduced a new bus service from Agunako to Dimapur for convenience and to facilitate the travelling public from May 7th. Notably, the Minister for Public Health Engineering flag of the State Transport Bus at Agunako ESC headquarters on Saturday on the Newland District. Meanwhile, the General Manager, Manager of NSP on Friday in notification stated that pursuant to government approval February 25, 2022, the new bus services will cover a road land of 46 km from May 7 as city bus category services. It further informed that the departure timing from Agunaku to Dimapur will be at 6 a.m. and from Dimapur to Agunaku will be 3 p.m. in summer and 2 p.m. in winter. A free awareness health camp was held at a government middle school in Notunbusti, Aukel on Saturday. Notably, the free health camp was organized under Central Council of Research in Homeopathy Minister of Ayush, Government of India, with a cooperation from Colony Heads and Chairman. It is to be mentioned that during the camp, not only students but the people residing in the locality also avail the opportunity for the free checkup. It may also be mentioned that free medicine were also distributed during camp. Free health camps and providing free medicines to all needy people with the cooperation of different colonies, villages and uh, the heads, village chairman's heads are, they are very uh, helping and, and uh, cooperating with us to conduct this type of uh, camps. So our office... Water treatment plant project at Kohima Zadima village received an approval in 2011 and an amount of 26 crore was sanctioned for the project. However, the project remains incomplete even after a decade since funds began to release. The Zadima Village Council Authority along with media persons visited the project site on May 4. During the visit, it was noticed that no pipe connections were fitted to the units. And the pipe connection between the three empty reservoirs were found to be rusted. ZVC Chairman Nila Honile Solezio also condemned the PHED response to the RTI application on the project. The PHED stated that the villagers were demanding for more water tanks. In response to department, Solezio stated that the response seems to be quite conflicting and an absolute lie. He pointed out that as per the detailed project report, the water pipes from the water source to the tank were supposed to be 10 inches. However, 5-inch pipes were fitted and that there is no water in the three reservoirs. The village authority stated that the only demand of the department was to complete the project for the villagers and stated that they have at no point of time demanded for any water tank. The newly constructed building of Government High School Shaka Bama was inaugurated on Saturday. Notably, MLA Zaliniki did the inauguration of the building. Meanwhile, the inauguration was done in the presence of Education Department, AHOD, HODS and officers. A day after Union Home Minister Amit Shah reiterated that the centre would implement the Citizenship Amendment Act after the COVID-19 pandemic, Assam MLA Akhil Gogoi said that the people in the northeast will continue to oppose the move. He said that the people in Assam will not accept the announcement of the Home Minister and the fight against the act will continue. The Union Home Minister on Thursday said in West Bengal what the centre will implement the Citizenship Amendment Act as soon as the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic ends. The Assam MLA was warned the Union Home Minister not to implement the CAA in Northeast India. Gogoi further said that the CAA is an instrument of the BJP and RSS to make India a rashtra. He called it unconstitutional and many cases are pending in the Supreme Court.
The price of domestic liquefied petroleum gas cylinder has been increased by rupees 50. With the latest revision, the 14.2 kg domestic cylinder will now cost rupees 999.50 cylinder in Delhi. It is to be mentioned that the hike in cylinder prices has come at a time when people are already troubled by the soaring prices of petrol and diesel in the country. The LPG price hike would aid to the woe of the common man in India. Earlier this month, the price of the 19 kg commercial LPG cylinder was increased by rupees 102 to rupees 2355.5. The price of a 5 kg LPG commercial cylinder was also increased to rupees 655. In the last one year, domestic LPG prices have jumped by nearly rupees 200. A low-intensity tornado struck Barpita district in Assam on Saturday, taking residents by surprise who captured the rare weather phenomenon on smartphone cameras. However, there were no immediate reports of low supply. Reportedly, the storm hit the Chenga district near Bhamaputra at around 1 2 p.m. and destroyed around four to five houses. Meanwhile, the Indian Meteorological Department has issued a special bulletin on a storm brewing in the Bay of Bengal, which is expected to intensify into a cyclone on Sunday evening, packing a wind speed of over 75 km per hour and likely to move towards the coast of northern Andhra Pradesh and Odisha. If the weather system intensifies into a cyclone, it will be called Asani or Sinhalis for Rat. The Supreme Court is set to regain its full strand of 34 judges with two fresh appointments to the top court on Saturday. Two days after the Supreme Court collegium headed by CJI and N.V. Ramana recommended the names of Guwahati High Court Chief Justice Sudanchu Dulia and Justice Jamshed B. Pardiwala of the Gujarat High Court for elevation to the Apex Court. The Union Law Ministry announced their appointment on Saturday and separate in separate notification, notably once they take out early next week, the Supreme Court will begin its sanction, strength of 34 judges. Political leaders across India on Saturday paid tribute to the luminary Nobel Peace Prize laureate Rabindranath Tagore on his 161st birth anniversary. State BJP President Tamjani Nalong took down the Twitter and said tribute to one of India's greatest thinker, writer, poet and social reformer, Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore on his birth anniversary. While MLA H. Tobihoto IME also tweeted saying, let us celebrate earth and literature that shaped the face of India's progress as we remember Tagore of great thoughts and intellect. Meanwhile, Union Minister for Road Transport and Highway Nitin Gadkari remembered the Indian polymat to mark Rabindranath Tagore Jayanti. Furthermore, Congress India tweeted, We remember the immense contribution of Rabindranath Tagore, social reformer, writer and philosopher who reshaped Bengali literature. Held for inspiring our national anthem, he was the first India, Indian to be awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. UNESCO also tweeted a year later, his universal voice echo into the present, promoting our shared humanity. Be inspired by Tagore humanist idea. Notably, Rabindranath Tagore was a Bengali polymat who labored as a poet, author, playwright, composer, thinker, social reformer, and painter. Tagore grew to become the primary non-European and the primary lyricist to win the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1913. Health Minister of several states have slammed WHO for its estimated of 4.7 million COVID-related deaths in India, saying it is baseless and intended to show the country in a poor light. Notably, the Health Minister who attended the 14th Conference of the Central Council of Health and Family Welfare on Friday said that India has a robust, efficient and comprehensive system for registering that and all COVID fatalities are systematically recorded transparently following a legal process. Notably, the conference was held in Gujarat and was chaired by Union Health Minister Manchuk Mandavia. Meanwhile, a resolution was passed at the conference strongly objecting to whose 
WHO estimate of COVID date in India. The minister also stated that the WHO estimate is unacceptable to India and the modeling method methodology used by the global healthcare body to reach the figure was flawed. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh in an event said that providing maximum facilities to guarding India border is a top priority of the government. On May 7, Singh attended an event organized by the Border Roads Organization. The Defense Minister loaded the BRO for improving infrastructure in the border region of the country. Taking example of the recent development in northeastern region, Singh said that it has now become a new gateway for the overall development of the country. Singh further stated that road and bridges play a major role in the journey of human civilization, be it education or health trade or food supply, the strategic needs of armies, industry or other tasks of socio-economic progress. Three people were injured in an explosion in a gas pipeline in Tata Steel plant in Jamshedpur on Saturday. Reportedly, the blast occurred around 10.20 a.m. at the Battery 6 of Coke plan and is currently non-operational and is undergoing a dismantling process. It is to be mentioned that two of the injured people who were admitted in the Tata Man Hospital has now been to discharge while one is under observation. According to official as per the standard safety protocols, the incident was immediately reported to the authority concerned and for investigation to a certain the cause of the explosion is underway. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation has directed all Indian airlines to provide compensation and facility to passengers who are denied boarding despite reporting at the airport on time or an event of flight cancellation or delay. The DGCA has issued Civil Aviation Regulation Section 3 Series AIM Part 4 to address such situation. Therefore, the airline are directed to comply with the provision of the CAR at the earliest opportunity available. It is to be mentioned that if any non-compliance of the provision of the CAR will be viewed seriously and strict action will be initiated against the earring airline, including imposing fi financial penalties as per regulation. Group of seven leaders, including U.S. President Joe Biden, is scheduled to hold a video conference on Sunday with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in a show of unity. The day before Russia marks its victory day holiday. It is to be mentioned that the meeting will cover current issues, particularly the situation in Ukraine. Notably, the leader of the G7 countries, which include the United States, Britain, France, Germany, Japan, Canada and Italy will hold their virtual meeting with Zelensky. Carlos Alcaraz toppled his idol Rafael Nadal 6x2, 1x6, 6x3 in the Madrid Open quarterfinal on Friday. Carlos Alcaraz will face top seed Novak Djokovic in semi-final day at the Mutua Madrid Open on Saturday, with both the men single and double draws getting down to the business and at the ATP Master 1000 event. The first ATP had to have a meeting between top seed Novak and home favorite Carlos Alcaraz local time. Alcaraz has paid 35 year old fellow Spaniard Nadal twice and lost on both occasions. After beating Rafael Nadal for the first time in three tries in Friday, quarterfinal become the first teenager to defeat his countryman on clay. The 19-year-old Alcaraz has a chance to beat world number one Djokovic for the first time in the semi. Chelsea Football Club has confirmed that term have been agreed with a consortium the lead by Los Angeles, Douglas Patona, Dote Boyle and backed by Clearlack Capital over the acquisition of the English Premier League soccer team. The Stamford Bridge Bass outfit announced the £7.4 billion deal for the Renin 
European champion in a statement issued in the early hours of Saturday, subject to receiving the required approval. The club stated that the sale is expected to complete in late May, subject to all necessary regulatory approvals. Chelsea said the new owner would pay £2.5 billion to purchase share while committing a further £1.75 billion to invest in the stadium, women's team, the academy and the Chelsea Foundation. A Mohali court on Saturday has issued an arrest warrant against BJP leader Tajinder Pal Singh Baga and instructed the people to arrest him and produce before it. According to report, it has now been proven that they just want to book Tajinder Baga in some case or the other. Meanwhile, the Delhi police has said that they will be present in Janakpuri to take all legal action and cooperate with father of Tajinder Pal Singh Baga. Pritpal Singh Baga, on the other hand, BJP MP and BJYM Chief Tajesvi Surya meet BJP leader Tajindra and his father Pritpal at their residence. It may be mentioned that Baga reaches residence in Delhi after he was detained by Punjab police in Delhi on May 6. A depression has formed over the southeast bay of Bengal about 170 km ways of CAR Nicoba and is likely to intensify into a cyclone storm by May 8. The Indian Meteorological Department said on Saturday, notably, the IMD has predicted that it will move northwest, northwestward till May 10 and recurve northeastward thereafter. As per IMD prediction, till May 8, there will be low pressure zone. It could not, couldn't be a low intensifier cyclone. The fire department was directed to keep 175 units on alert mode and the leave of officer was cancelled. It may be mentioned that southern districts are more vulnerable. This is all for now. For more updates, keep watching Nagaland TV.